Hello and welcome to We the People. I'm Barkha Dad. This past week, eight Muslim men who were initially accused and held responsible for the 2006 Maligaon blast were formally discharged after the NIA, the National Investigative Agency, accepted that there was no evidence against them. In fact, in its observation and order, the court said that these men had been made scapegoats by the anti-terror squad of Maharashtra. The acquittals, or rather the discharge, raise a larger question about the Maligaon mysteries. Now, both the 2006 Maligaon blast and the 2008 Maligaon blast are being investigated for links to right-wing Hindu groups. In fact, five different terror attacks between 2006 and 2008, the two blasts in Maligaon. then of course ajmer makkah masjid and finally samjhota seem to have followed a pattern initially investigators blamed islamist terror groups and then they changed their mind and started investigating the links of right wing hindu groups this past week has also seen another controversy one such group that was initially under the scanner or rather individuals from that group that were under the scanner abhinav bharat today has hit back saying that at least two witnesses have turned hostile witnesses who had testified against colonel purohit are now saying that they were under pressure to implicate him and in fact have given him a clean chit on we the people today we ask whether politics will suppress the truth of these five terror attacks where in 2016 we are no nearer to closure let me start with the two politicians uh, of the congress and the bjp sudhanshu trivedi the fact of the matter is uh, that your party has commented a lot on colonel purohit and the two witnesses who have turned hostile if you club that with captain nitin earlier that's that makes it three witnesses who have given him a clean chit you've pointed to this being an illustration that the congress may have tried to create this construct called saffron terror but you've barely commented on the discharge of eight muslim men in maligaon is that not also worthy of comment it, uh, where does that fit into your larger argument there is uh, nothing to be connected with any religion so we are not perceiving all this problem with of is one religion or the other religion but there are two three facts which has to be taken in this broader so called context of saffron terror anywhere in the world or anywhere any time in india hmm. you name the investigations in which the investigative agencies have gone in one direction and then taken a u turn it's only in these cases of so called saffron terror second thing the only cases of so called terrorism in which the foreign investigative agencies are saying something else and indian agencies initially saying the same thing and suddenly took u turn you can blame the indian agencies which foreign agencies have said something fbi else? in the case of samjhota express they are still saying that this was a pakistani handiwork but we were saying the same thing now we have turned back third thing if this is at all a proper diagnosis after the due diligence then in maligaon case it was handed over to nia in 2011 mm. even the charges were framed in 2011 but as early as in december 2009 yes. in raj sabha proceeding home minister chitambaram uses the word saffron terror mm. in july 2010 as per the american records i'm not saying they are uh, gospel truth rahul gandhi using with the americans the word saffron terror hindu terror Another person, and and in another December two thousand ten, another person who spoke about saffron terror was a person who's a member of uh, member of the BJP today, R K Singh. When he was Home Secretary no, in two thousand thirteen, I think the time. I he, am talking... he gave a statement saying that there are at least ten people who were once linked to the RSS. And this is his statement, not mine. No, his statement as Home Secretary. On record, then as Home in Secretary. that case, the then Home Secretary G K Pillai saying that now I'm coming to political aspect. Yeah, Digvijay Singh in December two thousand ten. is inaugurating a book which is saying 2611 is an rss co uh, conspiracy mm. means well before it is transferred to nia before the charges were framed the congress leaders they started using the it means it was a prejudice thesis which has been subsequently covered up by using the government machinery it seems so you are saying that in your assessment there are no right wing groups that are involved in any of the five terror I attacks i am not I've saying mentioned. 
what is technically right or wrong i have put the thing morally okay. and politically okay now on this program today we are going to hear from dr farooq maktoumi he is here on the program he is one of those eight muslim men who's actually been discharged we'll also hear from captain nitin joshi who's a witness in the maligaon uh, blast of 2008 who believes he was pushed to testify against colonel purohit so we're hearing all shades of opinion here manish tiwari has the congress actually locked itself into a corner because there are congressmen also who say okay we should never have used the word saffron terror if we start with the sort of politically con uh, correct construct that terror does not have a religion and we say that when it comes to islam then should we be saying the same when it comes to right wing hindu groups well the congress never uh, color coded terror in well, fact i can in fact i can in fact i can take him and uh, everybody back to the april of 2010 when a statement was issued by the then general secretary in charge of communications mr janardhan devedi where he clearly said that the congress does not color code terror a statement that was rearticulated by all of us ad nauseum time and again so therefore there are some people who are in the habit of selectively cherry picking and extrapolating so she, in order uh, to create a thesis mr shinde who was home minister in fact january 2013 shinde was over in the terror in fact sudanchu i didn't interrupt you mr shinde spoke about you know, the rsc terror camps it, and had to apologize for it in parliament <coughs> barkha the congress as an institution the congress as a party the upa as a government has never ever color coded terror and now let so me so you are saying there is no such thing as saffron terror you i am saying you I, reject that label i i i am saying that there is no such thing as islamist terror there is no such thing as saffron terror there is no such thing as sikh terror terror is terror and anybody who perpetrates okay. terror uh, commits a crime okay. needs to be prosecuted and allow okay. me to complete you see this whole entire bogey that the investigation in certain cases was Uh, carried out in terms of a predetermined construct in order to fix some people is completely and absolutely erroneous and the greatest example of that is what happened with samjhota express see samjhota express investigation initially uh, started with the usual suspects in mind and when they hit a roadblock uh, in, in in terms of the investigation and started looking at things differently they discovered that there could be a different reality so therefore for some people that truth is inconvenient okay. they what, are not what, willing I, I to, to accept to, it to and you, therefore please, please they decide to demolish it. it up so that should uh, he is saying that the congress party is not having anything related to terror of any religion then while they were revoking quota it is officially on record they said that because the muslims are mostly implicated we should be <coughs> at the same thing was in tada tada was brought during congress time withdrawn during congress time and you were saying that particular religion is more targeted so we have to withdraw the act well and you are saying that again, you do not again, think terror again, again, with any have, religion again you have selective memory if you are quota having... was revoked for the simple reason because the law was draconian it assaulted the fundamental okay. tenets of, uh, of of civil rights and that's the man that's the reason okay, why and tada I, was allowed to expire and, 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 because and, and, tada mr sudanchu trivedi and, and, and let me let, let me put it straight tada more tada cases were registered in states where there was no terrorism rather than in those states where okay, there was terrorism okay now we can't let and bjp and congress hijack this hijack and this and during the tada time both so of the states the whole government was there that's besides oh, the okay, point please please please, please we have, have to let other people speak and i want to hear from uh, uh, farooq magdumi and captain nitin joshi in just a moment nr vasan who 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 is a uh, 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 formerly been with the nia is also with us the nia's perspective in a moment from now but prashant bhushan uh, you are somebody who's followed these cases very very closely uh, how do you see for example a statement from some somebody like rohini salyan who has been a public prosecutor in these cases who has made the allegation that there is an unofficial go slow when it comes to the right wing groups well uh, that's not very surprising given the manner uh, in which even these fake and counter cases are being handled the fake and counter cases of gujarat the manner in which they are being handled or that uh, Uh, are you referring to the ishrat case ishrat as well but as but there the bjp would then argue that chidambaram changed the affidavit he was aware yes, of the first the affidavit point. where she was called that's, a terrorist that's, that's not the point persons who are clearly charged sheeted have been not only uh, uh, exoner in the sense that they have been uh, reinducted back in service mm. one of them a charged sheeted persons has been a person has been made the dgp of gujarat mm. If you look at all these things in perspective, and Rohini Salyan's statement about how she was being pressurized, etc., it is obvious to me 
that uh, attempts are being made at a political level to somehow derail both the fake encounter cases as well as these cases in which the accused uh, now are these uh, persons from various But Prashant, if the witnesses turn hostile, what can the, how can we blame the BJP, they would argue, mm. for witnesses who have changed their mind? In fact, witnesses who are saying we were under pressure at that time to testify against groups, those were, ex you know, uh, statements ex coerced out of us. No. What about Rohini Salian's statement? Rohini Salian is a public prosecutor. Yeah. She is saying that she is being put under pressure to somehow go soft mm. on the accused persons who belong to the Saffron organizations. Or take the U-turn mm. which the public prosecutor did in Malikao 1 <coughs> after it, it was absolutely clear from the subsequent investigations that were done that yeah. the ATS charge sheet against these Muslim men was uh, totally bogus charge sheet yeah. with cooked up uh, evidence, etc. Yeah. Even then, the public prosecutor takes a U-turn and says, you know, he does not want these people to be discharged. But then eventually the NIA said, we will not oppose the discharge. Uh, eventually eventually that the, the court that said that they have to be discharged. Despite the public prosecutor opposing their discharge, the court said that there was absolutely no evidence against them and the whatever evidence was brought okay. was cooked up evidence. So therefore all this is showing that there is clearly now political interference and that's why actually witnesses turning hostile happens when they feel that they will enjoy the protection of the regime okay. in power. Quick, quickly Siddharth, then I want to go to in Mr. Rohini Basit. Sarian's I case, one fact is overlooked. Yes. In the concluding months of 2013, yes. she was also the counsellor and she said that the government should not oppose the bail of those who are Muslims. And very ast uh, astonishingly, the government decided... Not because, okay. they, are, not because they are Muslim, no, but no, because no, no, they no, are no, innocent. Because the two of the government should have had a clear mindset, either you will not oppose anybody's bail, let the court decide, or you will allow, oppose everybody's bail, let the court decide. Yeah. Come here, so, come Rohini Sangyan's mindset was very much clear during the UPA regime. Um, okay. So, this fact is always uh, overlooked. Although, although, may I just clarify uh, that two of the accused in the Malegaon case, Sudhanshu ji, one of them was found to not be in Malegaon on the day of the blast, the other was in jail. So, the, the reason to actually say we do not oppose the discharge is not because of the religion of anybody, no, no, it because is of the on innocence. Record that the, since the uh, angle of Saffron terror has come, so those who are Muslims and are accused, they Manish, should be allowed quickly, to be on bail. No, if the I government comes to say, I'm sorry, this is the worst kind of misrepresentation which can ever take place. No public prosecutor will ever make a statement saying that people should not should be granted bail or not granted bail on the basis of their religion. Yeah. This speaks of a completely bigoted and for the lack of a better word, an obscurantist and a medieval mindset okay. which only sees things through the prism Mr. of Masad, religion. The medieval mindset is that the persons like Lashkar e Tawbah Chief Hafiz Saeed is called Hafiz Sahab from Congress. Can we the be Osama bin Laden is called Osama G from the Congress. And the Afzal Guru is called Afzal G. I'll tell you. And okay, okay, RSS okay. okay. Is so, Tashi, I, I, I have to go to Enar Basit. I have to go to Mr. So, Basit. Okay, okay, let's hear from, I, I, let's hear from someone who's been in the NIA. We're all talking on their behalf. Mr. Basit, how do you see this fierce politics around these cases, you know, doesn't it come in the way of NI investigators doing their job? And how do we explain the contradiction? There's a pattern here. All the five terror cases, we start off with looking at, you know, jihadist groups. We start off at looking at known Isla Islamist uh, extremist groups. But we end up in all of these five cases looking at right-wing Hindu groups. See, I like to uh, draw your attention yes. to a bigger context rather than concentrating on these cases. Yes. See, today there is a crisis in police the investigation standards are falling police no longer does professional investigation and that's why we are at a situation which we are seeing today this is all you know discussion whether a political party or b political party but we must look in within a police uh, as a police officer is a former police officer i can say yes that not only these cases, in many, many other cases which do not come to li limelight, innocent peoples are charge sheeted. They suffer there in the jail. But because those cases are unknown, so, they don't come to so limelight. So are you blaming the flip-flops in this on poor policing? I, 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 my my <coughs> entire contention is I have been an investigator throughout my life. Yes. 
our investigation standards are appalling to say the least. Another difficulty which these investig and uh, you know another misconception which I would like to remove today. Yes. CBI, NIA are not superior investigation agencies. Yes. These agencies enjoy the same power in the code of criminal procedure as local police or any other investigation agency enjoys. Yes. So let there be no misconception that CBI or NIA are superior investigation. Sir, do you, how do you respond to the allegation that NIA has been asked to go slow when it comes to the right-wing groups? See, in my 35 years, nobody asked me to go slow, nobody asked me to look this way or that way. As a police officer, it is my duty to do my job professionally, independently, objectively. So you're saying in Malegaon, you're law. saying in Malegaon, one, I, I, I the policing why, and the investigation was appalling. Why, why this problem is coming? You see, these cases, let's understand, they were transferred to NIA after a much, much long interval. Yes. By that time, the crucial evidence has already lost. Yes. Even if you bring any other investigation agency, Somebody said FBI, you bring FBI also. Now after 10 years, after 6 years, from where you will get the evidence? So sir, that's the main point that most people will want to know when will we, are we ever going to know the truth or is the truth just going to be buried? Now, I just want to hear from, I just want to hear from Dr. Farooq Maktoumi and then I'll get the others to respond. Um, uh, Maktoumi sahab, aap discharge hue officially, uh, isi hafte 25 tarikh ko. Um, आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे यहाँ जो लोग हैं उन सबको क्या कहना चाहेंगे आपने बहुत साल जेल में बिताए उसके बाद आपको बेल मिला जो एटीएस है महाराष्ट्र की वो अभी तक जो रघुवंशी साहब हैं वो कहते हैं I still stand by my theory इस डिस्चार्ज होने के बाद भी तो एक वो जो धब्बा लग जाता है जिंदगी में वो फिर आपको भी लगता होगा जाता नहीं डिस्चार्ज के बाद भी बिल्कुल नहीं जाता है इसमें सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज ये कि जो गवर्नमेंट अथॉरिटीज हैं उनकी मेंटेलिटी क्या है उनकी टोटल मेंटेलिटी तो जो है सेफ्रावन के फेवर में होती है किसकी जो बेसिकली एटीएस ऑफिसर्स की मेंटेलिटी जो है सेफ्रावन के फेवर में थी इनिशियली मालेगांव बम बलास केस जो है लोकल पुलिस के जरिए जो है करेक्ट डायरेक्शन में जा रहा था दो बलास जो है दो नई बाइसकल पे हुए और बाइसकल कहां से परचेज की की गई वो शॉप तक जो है लोकल पुलिस पहुंची और साइकल साइकल असेंबल करने वाले बॉय का जो है स्टेटमेंट भी रिकॉर्ड किया गया उसकी हेल्प से जो है कंप्यूटराइज स्केचेस भी रिलीज किए गए और अचानक मतलब जो है डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ पुलिस महाराष्ट्र जो एक केस जो है एटीएस को ट्रांसफर करते हैं और एटीएस को केस ट्रांसफर करने के विथिन अभी जो है केस सॉल्व हो जाता है और जो है 9 इनोसेंट पर्सन जो है इंप्लीकेट कर दिए जाते हैं अगेंस्ट में कोई एविडेंस नहीं था मेरे बारे में कॉन्स्पिरेसी का जो है आरोप लगाया गया आपके बारे में कहा गया कि आप सिमी के साथ जुड़े गए थे दैट्स व्हाई यू केम अंडर द स्कैनर मेरा सिमी से कभी भी कोई नेक्सस नहीं था कभी इन द पास्ट भी नहीं था फ्रॉम माय बर्थ अप टू डेट आई वाज कभी भी नहीं नो नेक्सस विद द सिमी तो सिमी से तो मेरा कोई थे नहीं था आप ब्लास्ट साइट पे उस समय क्या कर रहे थे ब्लास्ट साइट पर मैं नहीं था जिस टाइम ब्लास्ट हुआ है फ्राइडे प्रेयर का टाइम था और मस्जिद जो है बलास साइड से एटलीस्ट जो है वन किलोमीटर दूर अहलदीस मस्जिद में मैं नमाज में था उस मस्जिद में जो है एक चैरिटी सिस्टम है जहां पर जकात का सिस्टम था और वीकली जो भी एप्लीकेशन आती थी चैरिटी के लिए तो मेडिकल सेक्शन में देखता था उनके एप्लीकेशन में अप्रूव करता था और ये चैरिटी विथआउट एनी रिलीजन दी जाती हिंदू हो या मुस्लिम हम सब की हेल्प करते हैं ट्रीटमेंट के लिए मैं वहाँ उसके लिए एप्लीकेशन सेंक्शन कर रहा था जब मस्जिद के बाहर आया तो बलास साइड से आने वाले जो है एक निहाल नाम के आदमी ने बताया कि उधर मत जाइए उधर ब्लास्ट हुआ है इसमें एक चीज ये भी कि पहले से मतलब मुझको टारगेट किया गया क्यों? था आपको क्यों टारगेट किया मेरे जो रिफॉर्मेशन की एक्टिविटीज थी सोशल एक्टिविटीज थी बेसिकली जो है इस्लाम में जक़ात का एक सेंट्रलाइज सिस्टम है जो एट प्रेजेंट इंडिया में मतलब अप्लीकेबल नहीं है अगर वो इंडिया में अप्लीकेबल हो जाए तो एटलीस्ट मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी से टोटली पॉवर्टी खत्म हो जाएगी चले वो एक अलग डिबेट है लेकिन आपका ये एक वेरी सीरियस चार्ज काम है आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू ओपन दिस नाउ फॉर शाहिद एंड मिलिन जोशी राव एंड नीला गोखले एज वेल दैट मुस्लिम विल सी द पुलिस इज टिल्टेड अगेंस्ट दैम वेन दे गो थ्रू समथिंग लाइक दिस नाउ On the one hand, Sudhanshu and Manish will say we don't want to give any of this a religious label. On the other hand, the religious label is creeping into this debate whether we like it or not. Barkha, it's not just Maligaon. If you look at most of these cases from Hyderabad, from Uttar Pradesh, last week three people were exonerated by the courts in Uttar Pradesh. Hmm. Uh, this, ha this in Delhi that has happened yeah. to Amir. Amir's Who's cases there. Who's written a book about it? Yes. In 99 percent of the cases, this is happening. What happens is that there is police pressure, sorry, there is media pressure, there is pressure from the political groups, there is pressure from the public opinion and the police goes for the easy way of 
identifying a few individuals who may be active here and there or who may be innocent who can be you know implicated and they are they solve the case and they can take all the credit and the media media jumps immediately on these things and say i think wali pakde gaye lashkar e taiba if the police say lashkar e taiba they believe it's lashkar e taiba in most of the cases they may say it's very difficult to have evidence in such terrorist cases yes it is very difficult to have but not in so many cases so what not are you implying the board. what my, are you implying my i am implying is i was arrested under tada when tada was introduced i was very first in 1986 i was arrested under tada just because interviewing jagdeep singh chauhan in london and dozen other papers had done it so the point is that these politically these laws have been used to score political points when congress is in power they want to prove that they are as nationalist they are as against terrorism as bjp and in order to prove that they come up with these things and all cooked up stories and cases when bjp is in power they have their own <coughs> agenda so the, between these agendas the the real terrorists and there are there's don't look at it black and white there are terrorists and there are terrorists among muslims also i will not say that they are not but the way these things are hyped you're the saying, way people are you're saying between the competing agendas the real yes, guys are yes, getting away i, I want to comment from you these, these the fake real, cases were framed on, on the watch of congress governments in maharashtra <clears throat> so while today you may want to you know go, go around and make a statement to the bjp this happened on the watch of maharashtra what also happened on the uh, on the watch of maharashtra was a group like the sanatan sanstha not being banned despite multiple uh, requisitions to do that and now they're being investigated for the assassination of three rationalists as you know Well, Barka, if the underlying uh, construct of your question is that the Congress government in Maharashtra directed the investigation in a particular uh, manner, I would like to reject it in its entirety. But yes, there is a difficulty. You have people in the law enforcement <coughs> agencies who have a certain ideological predilection, who tilt in a in a particular manner. If you read the accounts of all those people who've been discharged or who've been acquitted, you know they point to a narrative which, unfortunately, is not a pluralistic here, narrative, but, but and here, that's that's here, that, that, that's problem. a reality. Here is the problem: in this deeply politicized environment, the same allegation is now being made with the, by those who are, uh, uh, you know, law, who are. the right wing by ideology let me get in milan joshi rao he's with actually the abhinav bharat which is the group that is you know come come under the scanner or a lot of public debate because of colonel purohit and the maligao blast now uh, milan joshi rao you have always held that colonel purohit who was a serving colonel when he was picked up is innocent now there is a contradiction here colonel purohit himself in 2012 in an interview to outlook said i infiltrated the abhinav bharat as an intelligence officer you have said to me several times he didn't infiltrate the abhinav bharat he infiltrated other groups he was genuinely a member of the abhinav bharat what is your position on colonel purohit See, and his association with your group let me start with one thing that he's still a serving colonel officer in indian army he is uh, still very much into the army and the army is supporting his case right yeah. now and the reason why i tell you that uh, the reason uh, why he didn't infiltrate into abhinav bharat which has been largely into the media is because there are certain army confidential reports hmm. so what if if i may read one of them this is dated 31st of december 2006 wherein a commanding officer quotes that lieutenant colonel purohit has infiltrated into simmi with his sources in his area of operation hmm. so he definitely had infiltrated into the jihadi groups and what about abhinav bharat and why, what about would, what about the 37 audio tapes and the laptop that was seized from dayanand pande where on these audio tapes you are hearing colonel purohit talking at length about a hindu rashtra and so on and you know there are there are incriminating conversations there yeah but then those are not authenticated so far as my knowledge is concerned if 37 all, been, tapes 37 audio conversations yeah and who would tape them If, if at all the investigating agencies were tap taping and tapping the phones of Lieutenant Colonel Purohit, that is what they say in their document is that they had been tapping it since 2006. Why would they wait to arrest Lieutenant Colonel Purohit in 2008? They would have arrested him much earlier when they were knowing about his alleged con conspiracy. Let me bring in Prashant Bhushan here, and then I want to just play Captain Nitin Joshi's uh, interview on the phone with us. Prashant, the fact of the matter is that this is an extremely polarized political conversation now around both of these cases. So you have a Farooq Madhumi who's saying, "Keep." जो पुलिस थी वो हमारे खिलाफ थी हमारी कौम के खिलाफ थी यू हैव अ मिलियन जोशी राव हु द सेम एलिगेशन दैट वी आर पीपल वो अंडर प्रेशर टू टेस्टिफाई अगेंस्ट अ कर्नल पुरोहित यू सी इन 2008 we had a, a people's tribunal in hyderabad 
on these uh, terror cases, uh, number of terror cases which had been investigated recently yeah. by the various police agencies and where by and large uh, Muslim men supposedly mm. belonging to Simi or LET yeah, etc. Uji. had been yeah. charged. Mm. Uh, some of them had been acquitted by that time, others were still in progress. But the testimonies which came before this People's Tribunal, which also consisted of several retired judges, uh, we came to the conclusion that in a very large number of these cases, innocent people have been charge sheeted. And in almost all these cases, it's Muslim people who have been charge sheeted. Mm. And we saw a clear bias among the police agencies against these Muslim people in the sense that in, in almost all those cases innocent Muslim men had been charge sheeted and most of those cases which mm. came up for testimony before that tribunal. Mm. So this is a serious problem. There is a problem of ideological bias in the police agencies. There is also this problem which is mentioned uh, by Of Ms. poor policing. Of poor, not just poor policing, there is also this problem of a lot of media pressure being built up on the police to solve the case quickly. For quick results. And yeah. then therefore they go for easy targets. Mm. You see, this kind of view was created that uh, terrorism is only done by Muslims, etc. The, the reason why the word term saffron terror came was yeah. that this view had been propagated. So even if there were blasts in uh, Makkah Masjid or Ajmer Dargah targeting Muslims, even then some Muslim people were arrested so and you're targeted. So you are saying the word saffron terror came up as a counterpoint to the false cases against a number of innocent Muslims. Mr. Va Mr. Vasan, if I can just get you to comment on the Maligao case, which is yet to see a charge sheet. The Maligao 2008 case is yet to see a charge sheet by the NIA. How do you see Colonel Purohit, which has become a national talking point? You are familiar with the case, I know. You see, uh, let me tell you that this case came to NIA and after that uh, these uh, accused people, they have moved different courts at different points of time. Yes. The NIA did not have any reasonable chance to further investigate these cases till the Supreme Court said when the petition was moved that Makoka was not attracted. Yes. And the Supreme Court said you go back to the competent uh, court yes. and the court will decide whether Makoka is attracted and NIA was directed to complete the further investigation and file a charge. Do you believe there was enough evidence to investigate Colonel Purohit? See, the NIA Because in Samjhota he's not been charge sheeted. No, no. In Samjhota no. he's, he, he's not but there. But in Malaga 2008. In, in none of the cases. I just want to ask him. He, he knows the case. Do you okay. believe that... The, that you they, see, that case, let me tell you, the, the NIA he did not the have... He doesn't know the case. He, no, I... <laughs> Sir, why don't you tell He himself that said that the police investigation is appalling in this country. No, he doesn't know the case. The ATS. He, now I'm asking him as an NI investigator. See, uh, this case was not... In, could not be investigated by NIA because of the stake granted by different courts at different times on the petitions okay, no, no, moved by completely. these individuals. Okay, Leela no, I, I, I is, of course, representing uh, Colonel uh, Prohit legally. Yes, yeah. no, this is completely incorrect because... Uh, Purohit had simply asked for bail and it, the proceeding before the Supreme Court was in respect of bail proceedings, which I don't think it is something incorrect for an accused to uh, ask for bail. So but nothing there is a contradiction in this statement. Did he infiltrate the Abhinav Bharat as a military intelligence officer? Of course he did. Or was he a member of it? Because Milan Joshi Rao says he was he did not infiltrate us. He was genuinely a member of our group. The documents, the documents which the army people have filed in the court, in the NIA court recently, completely indicate that he had been keeping his superiors informed about whatever he was doing uh, in his operations. He is an intelligence officer who is doing his duty. Now just see a scenario where an uh, intelligence officer follows his own uh, own uh, uh, sources and those sources are made uh, by the ATS. So what is your position? That, My ca position that, 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 that Colonel Purohit was in the Abhinav Bharat as an undercover agent? I am not saying he was in Abhinav Bharat or he was not. That is for the court to de courts to decide. But all I am saying is that uh, the court of inquiry depositions of various army officers clearly indicate that he was keeping his superiors uh, okay. posted. What? I just want to say one more thing. One more thing about Rohini Salyan because much is being said about that. 
the NIA took over the investigation in 2011. From 2011 to 2014, yes. the NIA had still not formed, uh, filed any charge sheet. Okay. So it is very incorrect for her. Just see the timing. Somebody needs to investigate why she has said it when the Supreme Court says... She was saying that she was instructed to go slow and for three and a half years she was when, going very fast. In fact, she was instructed to go slow. Let's come back. Let's come back. Let's come back. She was also... Let's come back. And I also want to respond. I actually need to start taking questions now and I want to come back to Farooq. She was also instructed to go slow in 2014. Case. She didn't complain about okay, it. Okay. Wait, just one thing. It is only when the Supreme Court in April 2015 directed or requested the, uh, the NI court to complete the hearing of bail and dispose the matters within one month. That is when the bail application is being heard. That is when she gives an interview to some TV channel saying that I, am, uh, I have been asked to go slow. So from 2011 to 2014, why, why, why was the NI uh, doing any investigation? Okay, Manish, come in there. Then, then I want to play out Captain I, Nitin no, no, Joshi's uh, testimony uh, to let, us. Let me ask a very fundamental question. In this country, does the military intelligence have a statutory remit to infiltrate domestic terrorist organizations? And the answer is no. no. For example, yeah. the intelligence bureau has a remit, which is an internal remit. The RAW has a remit, which is an external remit. Even the NTRO is only allowed to operate up to 50 kilometers inside the Indian border. Yeah. So therefore, to turn around and say that the army or the, the, the Indian services have a have a remit Sudhanshu, to infiltrate Sudhanshu, terrorist Sudhanshu, groups Sudhanshu, is absolutely Sudhanshu, wrong. Sudhanshu, 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 there is, a, Sudhanshu, there is an admission of Himanshu Roy and the ATS chief at that time giving a certificate to Purohit that yes we have acknowledged and you have done a wonderful job. I'm but sorry, that is not invited. That is not for infiltration. But, but, but under the for army act, under the army act, under of course, all of course, uh, under, under all statutory provisions, there is no remit of that course, the sir. army has. To infiltrate a domestic sir, you don't group, know anything about maybe, army, sir. Except maybe in a situation where there is a disturbed area invoked, for example, in Jammu and Kashmir okay, or so in the northeast, where on. under some special on. dispensation they may have that raise your hand. Okay, so the answer to With me. due yeah. respect to Manishji, I would like to say that his government was not doing the same. The only case in the entire Indian history when two agencies of central government. CBI and IB standing against each other. That was Ishra Jaha case. <coughs> and moreover, those who are saying that the, this was a saffron influence over the other things, who was saying that Ishra Jaha is a terrorist? Then IB chief Asif Ibrahim, appointed by UPA, and I do not but want to take that. Then, to then why you are saying we'll that it is the saffron agenda or other we'll have a It means whatever is on the record that ATS officer we are trained by the Colonel Provi. It is on record. Yes, yes. And that's why. We Muslim, we are scapegoated by the ATS officers. You're, you're right that ATS was, like yeah, was trained by Colonel Purohit. Yeah, he's absolutely right that ATS was but trained by Maharashtra ATS was trained by Colonel Purohit. No, so what are you trying to say? Uh, that's why we believe implicated. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, okay. Look, as far as the misuse is concerned, I do agree that there is some misuse. But misuse of gangster act is there, misuse of dowry act is there, misuse of domestic uh, violence one, is one, there. One. So that is a different thing. But as far as they are saying that the one community is precisely targeted because of the ideological prejudice. Not by you. No, by every government. Every government, every government, every government. Congress government in, in Maharashtra, I, when Maligao happened, I went to see the chief minister with a group of members of parliament and we said that we fear that Muslims will be implicated and no, no. He said, I, I would we just like to say, I don't have any exactly. No, no, Shai, we could, we could see the, what is going to happen. I, I, no, exactly no, 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 no. that's what I'm singling out the Congress, BJP, and the Samajwadi Party because you are none of, you are none of the no, three. No, that is a fact. The BSP because, now, because in I, UP, it doesn't is happen. Is in Hyderabad, in, 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 in Maharashtra, it was your government. You know, in you know, let's Maharashtra, it was your government. It was let's not trivialize the serious debate. Let's not trivialize the serious debate. You know, by scoring these stupid political government points. Shai, 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 Point to what is stands in the Congress government that the UPA government Dabalist. or a Congress government directed in, 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 an investigation in, 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 in a particular manner. Do not happen. make wild okay, across okay, the board okay. charges. Okay. 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 Do not make the wild charges. So you I'm want to say that this is only the BJP. Shai, 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 Shai,
give you the evidence, Mr. Tiwari, if you want. I'll give him the evidence if you want. They have evidence in the court. They have evidence in the court. And get your man on it. Congress has played as much politics with that. One minute. Are you saying that the system, under irrespective of which political party it is, is tilted against Absolutely. against the Muslim community. Uh, against the minority, where do you not just Muslims. Where do you minority, come in? Where do you come in on the right wing? The the tribal, the marginalized. Where do you come in on the right wing groups? No, right wing groups absolutely have been doing and be, police by and large has been sympathetic. I agree with him to, with the right wing groups all along. Yeah. If you if you see the whole history of last uh, seventy years, you will see that. Okay. But you just can want to focus on Maligao, but Maligao is not a uh, isolated can we, case. Can, can we hear now? We can, we can just move this camera and we can just hear from Captain uh, Nitin. Uh, Captain Nitin. Now, Captain Nitin is one of the witnesses who says that he was under pressure to testify against <coughs> Colonel Purohit. So, what is happening in these cases is almost everybody is saying our statements have been taken under coercion. And therefore, are we ever going to know the truth? Let's just listen to what Captain uh, Nitin, he refused to come on camera. This is what he said to me on the phone uh, yesterday. In the last few weeks, a number of different witnesses have uh, retracted the statements and the original testimonies they had given in the curious case of Colonel Parohit. Many of them now say, or at least three of them have now said that they were pressured uh, to make testimonies against Parohit. Uh, one such a witness uh, is, of course, Captain Nitin Joshi. He's on the phone line with us uh, now. Uh, Captain Nitin Joshi, your original statement uh, uh, was recorded before a magistrate, which means it is admissible in court. Uh, in this, you actually referred uh, to, a, uh, to, to RDX in a green sack at Lieutenant Colonel Purohit's house. And you also said that Colonel Purohit confessed to you about having supplied RDX for the Samjhota blast. Why did you give these details before a magistrate if you are now saying it is not true? I have approached the Human Rights uh, Court for uh, seeking justice. And uh, I'm sure you have the papers pertaining to my complaint. So if you go through that, you will understand why. I am seeking justice now. You have made the argument, uh, Captain Nitin, that you were under pressure and you were basically told that if you did not testify in this way, a case would be framed against you uh, as well. Can you name the people who you say threatened you? No, not at this stage. Can you talk a little bit about Colonel Purohit, how you knew him and what, what, how you believe he came uh, to be implicated in this because one of the things he said is that he was a military intelligence uh, officer who was infiltrating different groups but he was clearly a genuine member of the Avinav Bharat as Milan Joshi Rao himself has said so can you tell us how you knew him and what you what your assessment of him would be well as far as how we came to be implicated I really don't know there are many things which are beyond the scope of my knowledge how I knew him I was working at Muslim military school and he had relatives staying nearby so one day he just came to visit the school and that's how we came to know each other, and uh, we kept on meeting after that. And uh, regarding what sort of a person he is, well, I can say he's a genuine person, uh, a true nationalist. And uh, Captain Yoshi, uh, you have, of course, spoken about the pressure you were put under, but uh, questions could be asked about why you did not speak up uh, earlier. Why did it take you as long as you did to approach the State Human Rights Commission? So how would you explain that? Well, you know, I had no legal support at that time. When I, was, when I, was, when I had access to legal advice, then I did the need. So in your opinion, I'm just clarifying this again, your, in your original statement where you spoke about a sack full of RDX at Purohit's house, this is not true, and you did not see any RDX or any weapons at Colonel Purohit's house. I, I mentioned all this in my uh, human rights complaint. So you know, if you go through that, you'll understand what exactly it is that I'm saying. Captain Joshi, when you say that they try to fix him in false cases, who do you believe or who are you pointing a finger at? Is it at the ATS? Is it at politicians? What are you exactly saying here? Well, there are certain people and whom I will name at the appropriate forum when the time comes. Uh, Captain Nitin, uh, I do want to ask you that Colonel Purohit has been recorded on tape, on several different tapes, actually having conversations that the invest prosecution said implicated him uh, uh, in, in, in the Maligaon blast. Uh, what would you say about that? I don't know of any such recordings. Uh, Captain Nitin, in conclusion, you've said that you will be making your statement at an appropriate time before a magistrate. Uh, you you are now prepared to legally say in court that Captain Purohit is uh, is innocent in both Samjhota and Malegaon, or are you only limiting your testimony to the Samjhota uh, Express where the NIA has said he's not even an accused? Okay, I have nothing to do with the Samjhota blast case. And uh, regarding Malegaon, as I said, when the appropriate time comes, on the appropriate forum, I'll make the required statements. Why do you believe you were threatened like this and who would you blame for what has happened to you? Well, that is for the 
investigating agencies to find out who was behind all this. But you stand by your statement before the Human Rights Commission that you were asked to fix Colonel Purohit. Yes, I do. Mr. Vasan, now you have you have this testimony from a, a, a captain who earlier described sacks of RDX at Colonel Purohit's house, who is now saying, "Mrs. Abardasti has done it." You did not complete your thoughts on Colonel Purohit. See, now this is a typical example of witnesses standing hostile, stating something before police and subsequently before a magistrate, and then subsequently turning hostile. This is very common. It happens very common. So, what does oh, the NIA no, do we, in this circumstance? No, I, 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 let me let, let let me clarify one thing. Yeah. You see, our criminal justice system, unfortunately, is so slow, so tardy that trials start after several years after the crime has been committed. Yeah. And if the witnesses happen to be known people, our relations, our friends. They are bound to turn come hostile under pressure, after some time. They are bound so to come under peer group pressure. Okay. Under pressure. Okay, I have time for final comments. We'll take some audience questions, and then all of you can come in with concluding comments. Yeah. I have two points rather after listening to this. Uh, um, Go ahead with one point. Yeah. Yes. The first point is if a captain is scared and he's making as and he's changing his statement, then I don't know who do we expect to speak the truth. Second point is why, and that is for Sudhanshu ji and Man, uh, Manisha that why wouldn't there be a uh, difference in? T I mean, why don't wouldn't there be a difference in? Uh, treating the religious as in if you're thinking that religious point is not coming, you're saying difference. there is a difference. Okay. No, I just want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, let's 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 let, let's just move on. Milan Joshi Rao, you mm -hmm. wanted to make a point. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, what what one thing which I want to clarify is that all these retractions or human right cases which the witnesses have approached the human right cases. But how does somebody happened? give such a detailed <laughs> statement about sackfuls of RDX and weapons, and then n number of years later say, "Yeah, to sub." Not n number of years. I, I was going to clarify that all these retractions, all these human rights cases were done immediately after they were being produced before the magistrate. And let me tell you this on record that we have text copies of CBI officers writing in hand what statement witnesses have to give next day in the uh, in front of magistrate. We okay. have those hand one, copies. One comment that I'm taking concluding. My point. There are two little questions. Quickly, one oh, point. One, one question. Time, yeah. uh, one question is he talked about uh, we don't uh, what do you color code uh, religion. religion. Uh, yeah, terrorism. Who then coined this word suffering terror? Okay, uh, but I think Prashant, you you've explained that you have yeah. said that there was an imbalance in a sense in the justice system. See, what was happening was that uh, a propaganda was being made by certain people that uh, look. Terrorists are only Muslims. Who hmm. else then? All, all terrorists. No, no, one minute. What did you say here? Who else then? What do you mean, who else? Why India what? has been. No, no, India no, has I, been no, 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 one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. One minute. One minute. Okay. See, see, you have, okay. you have, so this, you, you have walked in into exactly the rotten, problem. Rotten on the idea. one hand, you say we do not accept color coding of terrorism. Yes. I do accept. I do accept. So you're saying only Muslims are terrorists? Only Islamic terrorism has been on this country. We so have been slaughtered by Muslims. What about Khalid 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 and it has been Islamic terrorism. If you are talking about Kashmir, it is an Islamic terrorism which has happened in Kashmir. I have no doubts about there it. Are five, have. There are five terror attacks between 2006 and 2008 where you have a long confession by Swami Asimanan since yeah. retracted talking about how all of these attacks were a revenge for jihadi terrorism. This is his quote. Now hear me out. Secondly, secondly, you actually have mysteriously a former RSS Pracharak Sunil Joshi assassinated. Thirdly, you have the former Home Secretary of, of, of this country who is now with the BJP, who is on record talking about right-wing Hindu groups. Let's not call it saffron terrorism, but just like we say Muslims, we say right-wing. How can you sit here and say only one religion propagates terrorism? That is what is been happening. That is what is we have been seeing since 1947. Okay, Manish. That is what the propaganda is. Okay. Pakistan doesn't no, I, think I, I think you've had, this is not about Pakistan. No. You, you want to come in? I just, I just wanted to say that be realistic. I mean, how can you, uh, you know, in a blanket, blanket way, say that only Muslims are responsible for terrorism? Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. May I just complete? Exactly. <laughs> Money power and muscle power is more powerful than the judicial power. Okay. May Manish. I just complete? Manish. You, yeah. you know, I was finding that extremely laughable because this gentleman 
if he would have gone back to Punjab between 1983 and 1995, yeah. he would have found that uh, they were not exactly Islamists masquerading as Khalistanis yeah. who were perpetrating as, as uh, yes. you know, terror. So yes. therefore, I think, you know, we need to be a little balanced in the way we put things. All right. Now, I just want to get uh, Maktoumi uh, sahab here. Huh. डिस्चार्ज हो गए जी जी आज भी क्या टेररिस्ट के नजरिए से देखे जाते हैं बिल्कुल देखे जाते हैं अभी सामने बैठे हुए लोग हम लोग को मतलब टेररिस्ट कह रहे हैं हमारा धर्म जो है शांति का धर्म है हम लोग टेररिज्म के अगेंस्ट में है कुरान में क्लियर साफ लिखा हुआ है जिसने एक इंसान को मारा उसने पूरी इंसानियत को मारा इसलिए इस्लाम में जो है टेररिज्म के लिए कोई जगह नहीं है आपकी जिंदगी पे इसे क्या असर पड़ा है डिस्चार्ज के बाद भी क्या लोग अजीब नजरिए से देखते हैं क्या काम मिलना मुश्किल होता है जिंदगी कैसे बदल जाती है अक्विटल के बाद हाँ। वो जिंदगी वापस तो नहीं आती नहीं आती है मैं मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी मुस्लिम समाज में रहता हूं तो ज्यादा फील नहीं होता है लेकिन मैं आउट ऑफ मालेगांव बिजनेस के लिए नहीं जा सकता हूं मैं टीवी पर मतलब जो आप देखा जाऊंगा तो अब मैं मतलब आउट ऑफ मालेगांव पब्लिक के बीच में इजीली नहीं जा सकता क्योंकि जहां कहीं जाऊंगा सबकी उंगलियां मेरी तरफ उठेंगी मुझसे लोग बावजूद एक्विटल के बावजूद एक ऐसा धब्बा लग गया है जो सारी जिंदगी मिट नहीं सकता इंक्वायरी selected by the supreme court to and go into sort of these penance, terror some cases sort of penalty, and find out and some punitive uh, what has happened for those yes who yes this. what has happened why is it happened and what needs to be done to correct this because okay. this is a very very serious uh, Sh- Shai, problem quickly. sorry i'm out of time then sudarsh i Shai, agree with prashant and me yeah, okay. let's na, let's not look <laughs> at this issue in black and white there are shades and shades and those shades have to be understood and we do need a commission whether a judicial commission or some other commission and fast track day to day dealing with such cases because in most of the cases it is innocents who are implicated and therefore we do need and we have to rise above politics and i am just going to allow him a last we moment we should not get into politics i request sudanshu and my congress friend that let's not do politics this has been happening okay. above politics tanzi- and the system has worked against nia ke jo tanzil ahmed abhi assassinate hue the unke bare mein aapko ji ji एक्चुअली इस केस में जिन लोगों ने मतलब हम लोगों को जो है जस्टिस देने की कोशिश की उनका मर्डर कर दिया गया सबसे पहले हमारे डिफेंस जो एडवोकेट शाहिद आजमी का मर्डर किया गया उसके पीछे भी जो है हिंदू मतलब जो गैंगस्टर जो है रवि पुजारी का नाम सामने आया उसके बाद जो है हेमंत करकरे तंजील अहमद इन्वॉल्व इन दिगेशन ऑफ टू थाउजेंड सिक्स ब्लास्ट केस मनीष एंड सुधांशु रियली थर्टी सेकंडा आई थिंक इन फ्यू केसेज वेर wrong investigation or colored investigations have destroyed the lives of innocent people there must be huge punitive damages yeah. on those people who have actually carried them out that will have a salutary uh, uh, effect unfortunately the law of tort has not really evolved in this country to okay. such an extent where I, I people who uh, so carry out wrong investigations so you know know that they have to pay Man, for it at the so end so of the day so that's the last word please i have to end the technical remedies against the injustice should be very well there but i strongly object to this type of perception that the entire establishment was against muslims if this is the case then whether it is the sikong province of china whether it is the thailand whether it is the burma or the uh, bosnia herzegovina or the chechenia or the brussels madrid london it is a global phenomenon everybody is against uh, it is not global, global. So do not muslims are not and that's, that's why i am against so many people are not part of that global jihad do not try no no you are what you are saying sir we are patriot indians sir we are we are asking for india shall india हम हिंदुस्तानी है हम एक मिनट आप बोलिए लास्ट वर्ड हाँ हम हिंदुस्तानी है हम देश से प्रेम करते हैं और हम हिंदुस्तान की बात करेंगे दुनिया भर में क्या हो रहा है हमको उससे कुछ लेना देना नहीं है हम अपने भारत देश की रक्षा के लिए हम भारत देश से प्रेम करते हैं और इसकी उन्नति 
के लिए इसके विकास के लिए काम करेंगे और इस काम के लिए आर के साथ भी मिलकर काम करना पड़े तो भी हम करेंगे but one does have to talk about what compensation and what justice is due to those people like him who have spent years in jail being called a terrorist when they were not the debate remains open on what happens to all of these cases and will continue we'll leave it there thank you very much thank you